Kaman, wie Kaman. Für die Toka beim Kerschner. Es ist ein Pulle Kriege Haun. Land Spirit des Gieres. Er fährt München des Giere Kringkollen. Luch Gauer des Chelligen Lechele. Kaman, Torvarach des Bars. One minute I'm walking down the road that what I believed was a healthy young guy, and then next thing I know I'm, I'm in the hospital get bed getting um, all bits and pieces getting taken out of me. I could barely train midweek and stuff like now. Um, my fitness has gone up a lot more, my mobility is a lot better. For me, it's all down to acupuncture anyway. It's always disappointing, no matter who you're playing for, losing in any sport. But I suppose it's how you deal with that loss and, and what we do next. We've got girlfriends and sometimes we have to say thank you to them for letting us play. It's a bit of a, a sore point in the house that we scores a goal and just... I feel like killing them. <laughs> Als je een drie meers aan het is en als je een keuze wie mij geen te gek aanmenen, dan skip ik geen juzig. Als je een moer is vader, dan kan je juzig een schuil, dan skip ik een paar uur in het leven gelijk. Als je een moer is wie ik een jullig borstelijk in een spoor zoals een skijdagje is dan immer te plieën, als je een laatste zorg hebt, dan ga je even jekkel. It's a hard name to live up to. I, mean, I don't know, I just try to concentrate on my own game and forget about that. And usually it's not too bad on the pitch. Good! Great, Ryan! Good, Ryan! Good, Hatchies! You know, you just got to try and forget it and just play to your ability, which we all try and do. It's just the same for everybody. It's a team and we're all treated the same as each other. And that's the way we like to go out on the pitch. Gillian Clark in the Violent and Skipper Hine Yusik is on Univore. I guess high in law, the Hula Gamerka. It's such rivalry between Kimusi and Newton Moore, but we're all friends at the end of the day. A Kel Law did it at Gillian, I guess, and Skipper. Kel had all the rash Univore. Oh, that's my uh, Uncle Alec McGregor. Uh, that was the centenary match that was held between Kimusi and Glasgow Cowell. It was on the Dale, and uh, he was the oldest a surviving QC player. He was over 90, so he was asked to throw the ball up to start the match. So he was highly delighted to do that. That's um, the old McGilvery uh, North League Championship Cup. And that's my dad there with the, the bonnet on. And this is a, a picture of Savio, my grandson, holding the Kamna Cup the last time we won it in Dunoon. Uh, and this is a the same day, this is Amy, Michael's daughter, my granddaughter, and Savio with the cup again. This is a nice photo of Ronald with Savio and Amy, who were um, mascots for the day. Oh, I think when I was probably about four, um, my dad used to take me to the shinty. Um, we used to go all over the place in an old Ford Prefect car. My son Michael used to play. He's just retired a couple of years ago. And he played since he was a little boy. He was captain of the Mackay team and uh, he won his first medal um, when he was just nine. We've had a lot of success, but it hasn't come easy. Uh, the boys put a lot of hard work into it, and I think people think you just put, pull on a red and blue jersey and you have success, but that's not. I know <laughs> it's uh, a lot of hard work. I can hear you say that I can skip a hard work on the show. They make Gillian and Saskia more than they have done. It has been super, but uh, I was there when we weren't running anything as well. <laughs> um, many years ago, uh, we were getting beaten 10 nothing, and uh, I was there then too. So we appreciate what we've done. 
And I think we're in a, in a transitional period of bringing in a lot of new player, young players. And um, as Stephen Bothwick will tell you, we don't expect to do well in the league, but we might give a few surprises in the trophies. We did that last year. But um, the young boys are doing really well and mix, you know, it's uh, very encouraging. Yes, we were say, on top for the first 20 minutes or so, I would say, but you're going to come back into it. But uh, it's pretty even at the moment, so we're quite pleased. It's a good result coming up here and getting to uh, one point. It's especially if we only had, well, we weren't at full squad today. Obviously, we're missing Ronald and a few boys who were playing last year are still not playing this year with injuries and whatnot. And we're also missing a boys away on holiday as well. So we we're quite short today, but everyone pulled together and we worked well. And we're at times we're unlucky not to get the whole two points today. Yeah. We had a, quite a lot of shots, but none of them just seemed to be finding the target. It just didn't seem to be one of those days where the goals were going in. I think we'd like to win all four trophies if we could, but our main priority is to finally get the Scotch back into Kinesi, hopefully, but anything else that comes is you know, an added bonus. The Scotch is our main goal this year. The Tyvi Marker first and Agus in your order, a cushion near me hind you can shed the show, had a day son. A can you show each of it, boy horse to the good earth, the shoe like classical, gash shaken, the son of Kemena. My other says I treat the place like a hotel, just go up, ask for my boots, then go into the jobs and then see her again Sunday morning. But, um, no, all joking aside, no, they do. Um, like when I come up and visit them. Sometimes I come up on the Friday night just to break the journey up. You know, if we're playing up north, uh, come up on the Friday night and um, just spend a bit of time with them. Rather than driving up in the morning and having to travel away up to Inverness or, or Sky or whatever we're, we're headed for. My father used to be the manager. Uh, up until last year. So he'd be he'd be with us most Saturdays, well every Saturday in fact. But he comes up and watch the home games. I can remember being at a Shinty match in Furness when I was four, four and a half year old with my dad and you couldn't get near the field that was the old Furness Inverary and Loch Fine side time. So from then on, uh, it was my dad and my brother had me involved. And I started playing. I think I had a shinty from the day I came out of the pram and I started playing from six and seven. Uh, it's just a shinty background that was in my family. And for a long time, my dad and his two brothers played as well. Uh, it's just gone back. It seems to have been there forever. I started coaching uh, when David was six or seven. Um, it's 26 years involved in it, and half of that team that I had from under 12 level and half of the older team, who were a successful team as we are under 17 team, I think got the two teams at the right time and they all, sort of, the younger part and the older part came through uh, and they grew up through Shinty and it was a successful time for us, yes. Uh, there's no pressure now and I can go and enjoy the games and I still do that and I, like I said, uh, I'm vice chairman of the club and helping out with the under-14s now, so you're never really away from Shinty, never, because I 
it's a small town. You need as many people as possible. And now the whole guy we drag Nerk. Nerk will go out to far and some beer clinking. That was one year. Your child comes home and tells you you've got cancer. It's, um, it's the first day he came in and he said, oh, I've got bad news, Dad. But he was positive. He was positive from day one. Uh, his mum actually said to him, Now we're we going to fight this you know, as a family. <clears throat> but David, being so positive, uh, I think in, in his sport, and for that, he had him just a bolt out of the blue. But he dealt with it uh, amazingly uh, from the operation and his chemo. Uh, but he had a, a lot of support from his family, uh, friends, and a lot of people in Shinty. Uh, and he's a strong character, he's much like his mum. <laughs> so I think that helped him through the whole thing. He's still dealing with it, but because his background, the way he was brought up, and uh, he, his commitment to his sport and everything he does, he's running, he's, anything he does in life he, he wants to make 100% so he's just a nice, he's a nice person. His commitment to his, cl his club, his sport, he's just a die-hard uh, sportsman who loves playing the sport and he's just a nice person. Fyr jwch lw eich feis fel a drum, y meis glwch cyw le gylewri eich gyn ag ysri hiannw har y gyrae eich gyn. Slwch mwr, cwltr gylewr, ag ys, camarwch. I was making him a Harris Reed uh, waistcoat last night, so it's his first Harris Reed item that he's got, so he's quite chuffed. So yeah, it's good to have him here. I'm feeling quite excited, I'm kind of used to it uh, now anyway, so just put up some hats and last minute shoes to try and win the models backstage at the moment, so everything's going fine and it's got a good vibe backstage, so yeah, it's looking good. I've got six outfits that are going to be in show, which I've done for the centennial year of uh, Harris Tweed Orb anyway, so I've got four of those and two new ones that I made for the event, so it's been okay, it's not too much stress. <laughs> <laughs> A fish will stay in the lake, Judy. I will say, could you follow her? I will kneel, mock, tell Ashke. One of the jackets has a panel from Morocco that uh, my sister got me when she was travelling, mixed with Harris tweeds with silk velvet. So it's almost just like a big collection of what's in my studio kind of thrown together. So um, there's ones like that, and then pheasant feather jacket as well, a little big bustle at the back. Um, so it's just really quite self-indulgent as well. Some of the stuff that I do, it's not all for a reason. So. I think it went quite well. Um, I think the styling was quite nice and things, and yeah, it went quite good. It's quite different. <laughs> hey, stats. <laughs> it is uh, quite different, but I mean, each show's got its own, you know, ups and downs, and this one's been really good, and I think it's been great for the kind of Scott artists and up here in the Highlands and Islands, it's really showcasing, you know, uh, Scottish talent at its best. So. It's, it's great, it's a different world for me to what I'm used to, and it's just. She's seen her stuff up there, it's a bit of an eye catcher for everyone. She's very professional and she kind of knows what she's doing, so I just kind of sit back and if she needs something with her to carry, they'll do it, and that's about it. I think we're both very determined people. I think it, no, matter, no matter what you do, you have to be determined if you want to succeed tonight. And I think that's, that was very evident from when I first met Judy, especially with, with the first show I saw in Glasgow. I 
I kind of like it about her, and I think she probably likes it about me as well. <laughs> Fashion and shinny, yeah, direct comparisons. <laughs> A muntje roper goor, hy is Lisa Norman, kus laas saarietje ele gaar gehou. Today I suppose just really just a celebration of 10 years of manic shinty in Aberdeen. No, it's been, I suppose it's just accumulation of our achievements over the last 10 years. So I'm just trying to really get the kids out playing as much shinty as possible this morning. Then we've got our cup game this afternoon and then we've got a girls demo game and then this evening we have our big bash as some people are calling it so we've got a Kayleigh in the marquee with uh, a great Kayleigh band and various things going on around the pitch we've got uh, beer tent and barbecue and tent tier memorabilia so yeah just really trying to celebrate the achievements of the club over the last 10 years uh, part of the squad for the seconds that are playing against Kyle's, um, but we just have to wait and see. And again, it's about getting the, the kids and the boys as many games as possible. So we might have quite a big squad today, so we'll see how things go. Lisa started this as a, a six week course for primary five pupils. My son was in primary five at the time. Um, and then it sort of grew. The kids really liked the game, so we started doing little tournaments and then. The older kids in the primary school got involved and it just sort of grew from there. I first got involved with the club about a year after Lisa set it up. I saw the buzz about, about the school and thought I wanted to get involved in that and me and my friend came along and ten years later we're still still taking part. Eh? Sometimes we've wondered how we're, where we're going to keep going but um, yeah we've always managed it. Always managed to, to find something to keep the club on track. I was just a mum standing on the side and my boy was playing, I used to play hockey years ago and uh, so I picked up a stick very foolishly and started playing um, and I helped out coaching and then I used to coach the under 10s and before you knew it I was, that was me, I was hooked as part of the club. I'm from Zimbabwe, moved here about five years ago, came to Scotland. Um, the kids came along, we were actually walking along here, we moved to Everdell about three and a half years ago. We were walking along, saw the game and thought that looks interesting. The kids came along for a taster, really loved it, they got involved. I started to help coach them, then started playing. So I started playing in the second team and then started managing it from this year, the second team. It's just gone from strength to strength to strength. It's just been fabulous. And this year, particularly, we've, we've gained two extra teams. It's just amazing. What I enjoyed about it was also like the sportsmanship and everything else, which I don't think you've got in some of the other sports here. It doesn't have all the rubbish that goes with football. Um, it's a proper game and it's sporting and, and everybody behaves in a nice manner, but it's got that real, you just, just want to play. I just love that. So that really attracted to me and I wanted the kids involved in that to obviously learn a bit about sportsmanship and playing in a team and working together. Winning's important, but it's not the be-all and end-all, and that is what has kept the kids coming back year after year after year. Lisa has just managed to keep it going this whole time. I mean, Lisa is the driving force. It doesn't matter what you do, there's always a way to do it. And uh, people say, ah, we can do that. That's Lisa's standard answer. And she just, so she just drives it with positive enthusiasm. Lisa does a lot of sessions within the local primary schools and promoting the sport within that avenue. Kids love her, she's got a really good way of dealing with children of all ages. A lot of the times actually getting them younger as well, like, like Lisa's obviously done, is their confidence is a lot better, so their attention span is better, they're, they're a bit more competitive, they get in and under 10, they can actually control the ball a bit better. It's a lot easier then because they actually enjoy the game so much more, you know, because they can actually play it. Her commitment is astounding. I don't know anybody else who gives that amount, and really, she should be up for Sports Person of the Year. You know, she really should on the BBC or something, because she's just fab. It was the perfect day to win, wasn't it? It's what we needed, so... I mean, the weather couldn't have spoilt it. It's been absolutely fantastic. We've had a brilliant turnout. We just needed to win. It was brilliant. Obviously, uh, we couldn't have asked for better. Uh, I think, I don't know if even we could have imagined in the, even our wildest dreams we might uh, have 
hopefully done well against Kyles, but to beat them 4-2 was absolutely amazing. So Now we're halfway through the season, you're really starting to see the effects of having two teams training together, playing together, being able to play 11-12 aside at training you know, on a Tuesday and Thursday night makes a real difference and I think that showed today. We hadn't really thought a lot about our 10th year, I think it sort of sprung upon us and obviously, although we knew it was coming, uh, I think we didn't realise the achievements we would have made by the time we got to this, this year, so, you know, we have a team now in every, every possible age group. Eddie Tembo, Anishje, Mar Hart, Glicheter. I just get a horsey cushion, come on, can a Glicheter international. A cushion, it'll be Rutbeck, Nas Michin, to Hibo Hungalit. In the run, in the burst, good for him. Little reverse pass and a chance. Yes. And points. Oh, he took that very well, but Tembo made it. Great play, that is, that is terrific play from Tembo. I love you and you love me. There's that um, training about, about four weeks ago. I just got tripped up and fell awkwardly, so I uh, ended up damaging some nerves in my neck um, and lost uh, partial movement to uh, my right arm. So uh, yeah, it's been four frustrating weeks so far. I haven't been able to play. It's not been the best. But they told me it could be could be up to a couple more months before uh, before I'm able to play again. So it's uh, it's a bit frustrating just having to wait now. <laughs> it's very hard as well when you go down to watch because. You think uh, you think you can do better because you can watch everything. You know what's going on and everything else. But uh, all you want to do is get on, and get onto the pitch and play. Um, especially if the team's losing. Like I said, you always think you could you could do something to help. But uh, but it's still been there and still still watching the games and supporting the team is, is the main thing. You took the short boy and the Corman Kuijeke and leaves skipping the Halopa and Saturars and Dayson. Definitely a big deal for me, anyway, and the two that I've played before, um, and also to get picked from so many different players, it's a nice, it's a nice boost for yourself. And I, I love the occasion, I love the, the whole uh, theatrics of it, and the, the night out and everything. Yeah, the, just the whole weekend is, it's, it's a lot of fun. Most of the decisions I think are based on how you're playing over over the season. So um, I think I was doing pretty much all right for, for the games I had played in the first half of the season, but. I know it's obviously going to take me, even if I do go back in six weeks' time, it'll still take me quite, quite a few weeks, quite a few games to get back into it again. So I don't know if I'll be able to do enough to impress or not, depending on what time I get back. But so that's why the sooner, the sooner I get back, the better for me anyway. A coach Eddie, a cleaner of the Kutjak, and a coach of Skipit Nashant and Halopa, through McNeil. It's disappointing for me. Being involved with Granaka, seeing Eddie injured, it's, 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 the way he's been playing has definitely been disappointing for being a national player because Eddie's enthusiasm, he really does spark other people into life on and off the park. So I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> to be a miracle cure sometime in the next three, four, five weeks. Well, he's probably scored many goals for us this season, uh, but we do miss his enthusiasm in midfield. And to be fair, he has finished every game the strongest player in the park in every single game he's played in, so it says a bit about him. I think it's, it's a Catch 22, and the less goals you score, then obviously your confidence goes down a lot. Um, and then obviously you don't you don't uh, you don't perform well in front of goal. You may be a bit too nervous and taking a shot, and you pass it instead, and all this kind of stuff. And I think it just affects. You need to start scoring goals before you can get the confidence back up. But it's hard to score goals if your if your confidence is low. Now we've struggled to be better front. We've had some good games. Um, for example, three 0 on Saturday sounds bad. We hit the post twice. You know, it hasn't been unlucky every week. Some, some games we've deserved no, but uh, we're not far away, we're not far away. And uh, I think we're going in the right direction. A bit of luck, if the conference has just come up, you notice tonight we've done an awful lot of shooting practice, that'll continue for the rest of the season. At Eddie, he and Gus Teich got horsed on Skipper. I guess a fan caught him, slash the guy, a guy will run a game. And you, Hara Konyaka, the can of use it, for a bit of Borswick, so click for it, it's a click at it, I guess Captain Royal Rush. Hedy ten werken fem skip ik linjure geteen tole en jasse sport, kus nacht dit ne kien jach geschies. Agus maar een hulle toe, heb ik skip ik geen juus ik ietjer in de toilische shell.
Shokin Kombasa and Yakli Linurukitin, Erekwich and Dason, sir. Pishaks and Darnley. Can be a voy yeden of Arkison. I'm fit like a tosh creaker cushion. I guess a skipper glinner of the tenure of Hushi Giano. Can you Stephen Borstick nor Royal Ross eat your head and toy? Ach Eddie, he did lie, Vela. Brilliant. I absolutely loved it. Um... We started off really well, which is what we needed to do, and got an early goal. Um, but then after that, unfortunately, we just let the game slip a little bit. But the uh, second half came in and the boys dug in deep. Uh, even after the equaliser, we came in, got another goal, and yeah, just kept f fighting right up to the end. So, yeah, fantastic result. Yeah, well, I think, uh, like I was saying before, you know, when your head goes down, uh, it's hard to kind of come out of it, and you need, you need to get the goals to start get, scoring more goals. So hopefully now we can continue for the rest of the season and, uh, yeah, keep scoring. And now who does it come on? Han Garrison and Toler Kilo Valley. And it's a Neil McAfee and Dorcas, Jill to shame. Hello, Gag Lisa. And it's a Fanny and Coram. Come on, good fleet. A Cameron Cooper, Keen and Arsh, Dilly Divey McAfee, and it's in your ear and Dorcas and Kurs and Tiddy and the Korean. Give you your mouth, Bacon of Arch, Munchelloch Roger. I guess I ate a chili garage in a game, one of the other